Watching Free Speech TV in Seattle. Hey, Mark, what's on your mind today? Hey, Tom, it's Mark Taylor Cancel. I, I have a couple. Oh, hey, Mark. Quick, I have a couple quick updates for you. One, 37 states have now approved the Equal Rights Amendment. One more state is needed for it to become a part of the U.S. Constitution, the 28th Amendment. So keep an eye Maybe. on that. That's happening right now. Maybe. That the amendment that has been signed on to had an expiration date of about a decade and a half ago, as I recall, and that was actually part of the, you know, the, the preamble to the amendment. And there is a debate in legal circles over whether that's legal, whether, whether you know, if another state ratifies it, whether it just becomes the law or not. And, you know, it's so, but hopefully, you know, hopefully we had, we had, uh, uh, I'm forgetting who it was. It was somebody from now on the program a couple of weeks ago talking about this. But in any case, back to you, Mark. Yeah, I think yes, it was Cecile Richards. On, on Democracy Watch News, we had a guest from 2 ERA.org, so that's a good website to go to. And yes, the, the Republicans are saying that uh, they've missed that deadline. The Democrats, of course, are in support of the ERA. The, right. But really why I called was to talk about the World Press Freedom Index report from Reporters Without Borders, which, which oh, just Oh, yeah, we're down out. to 48 now, was it? Yes, we've dropped from 45th to 48th, so it's pretty typical that uh, we are dropping every year because of things like Donald Trump, you know, calling the press the enemy of the people and issues like no protection for whistleblowers and for journalists. There's no shield line in the United States to protect our right to protect our sources. Right. And there's a lot of journalists also who were being searched at the U.S. border and some foreign journalists who were being denied in the U.S. after covering, you know, and we've also had journalists murdered. I mean, there was that, you know, relatively progressive newspaper where the guy walked in and shot a bunch of people up in the upper Midwest. Exactly. Yeah, I'm sorry, it's not I'm, a great I'm, time I'm, to be a journalist in the United States, but uh, those of us who are need to pick up the ball and run with it. And every publisher, editor, and journalist in this country needs to make freedom of the press their number one priority. Yeah, I agree. Uh, you know, Jefferson was right. You can't have a functioning democracy without an informed and educated electorate. Exactly, Tom. It's really important these days for journalists to be very careful about their analysis of the news because there is a lot of propaganda out there, um, political propaganda that confuses people. That's part of the reason I think Trump got elected. So it's really important for journalists to be very careful with their facts and to practice journalistic ethics and make sure that we can be proud of the profession. And as an American journalist, I have to say I am not proud of the fact that we are number 48 in the world. By the way, Norway and uh, Finland are number one and number two. Wow. So those are countries where it's a lot easier to be a journalist and you have more access, actually, to information about the workings of your own government. Well, Norway, Finland, problem. and Iceland, and I'm not sure where Iceland is on that ranking, but they have rigorous, uh, these, these uh, Scandinavian countries, and I, re I realize Iceland is not tactically one, but um, these, these countries have um, just rigorous uh, laws about transparency in government. Yes, Iceland did pass uh, some national legislation on that issue. And, you know, I think it's incumbent upon us being the first country in the world, as far as I know, that ensconced the idea of freedom of the press in our own U.S. Constitution. It's we should be the, the beacon of light when it comes to freedom of press in the world, not number 48.